David Morgan with you at the Silver and Gold Summit 2017, San Francisco, California. It's by Wright Keith Newmeyer. No introduction needed. First Majestic, First Money Finance, a lot of other companies that he's brought to great success. Keith, uh, I just want to talk about First Majestic briefly. I want to move on to and explore the silver picture because you have a good grasp on the markets as well as myself. I think we should have a discussion about that. But first of all, give us kind of a rundown of the last six months and where you see, you know, uh, the company going in the next six months or so. Sure. Well, the next six months is going to be better than the previous six months. <laughs> you know, the uh, 2017 has been a bit of a challenging year and then it's the culmination of just the lack of investment uh, in our assets over the last five years. You know, the, the cash flows just weren't there in 2013, 2014, 2015 to really invest um, the necessary capital into the operations to sustain, you know, their levels of production. So we actually made a decision to lower production at three of our mines just to produce profitable ounces. You know, it didn't make any sense to us to be producing ounces at a loss. <laughs> you know, it's not really a real business if you do that. So, so you know, we we actually uh, uh, reduce the size or reduce the productions of some of our mines. Uh, but now things are changed. You know, 2016 came along. Well, actually, we, we, we turned profitable again at the end of 2015. And then 2016 was a bang up year for us. Our profits in 2016 was something around 125 million US dollars. And uh, so we've been plowing all that investment back into Mexico. And, uh, but there's a delay from the time, you know, you actually start making that investment to the time that you see improved operations. And uh, so we're expecting to see production start to increase by mid 2018. And, and we're gonna continue the spend uh, that we're spent this year. We spent 107 million US dollars in Mexico this year. Uh, it's gonna be very much the same in 2018. And uh, that's gonna translate into higher production over the next few years. So it's nice to go back and start rebuilding these mines again and increasing production rather than having to, you know, what we did over the last you know, five years, you know, turning over every single rock and trying to find a, a dollar to save. Um, you know, we're still obviously very focused on cost. It's very important. Um, even though I'm bull on the metal and think we're going to see much, much higher silver prices, there's never a guarantee. Um, so we always have to keep our eye on costs. Well, I know investors appreciate the fact that, you know, you look at it from a purely business standpoint and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's not a philosophical thing, but I'm going to move into the silver market in general. Sure. So I just came back from the New Orleans conference, as you know, and there seems to be this misunderstanding about some of the silver studies that come out. For example, it's very easily proven, or at least if you believe these two top studies, that there was a deficit in silver from 1990 to 2006. From 2006 to 2017 present, we've seen a buildup. So in a nutshell, the above ground supply of silver in 1990 was 2 billion ounces. It dwindled down, was eaten away by 1.5 billion ounces. In the end of 2006, we've had roughly 500 million ounces. Since then till now, it's rebuilt according to GFMS to 2.5 billion ounces. So we've built over the last 11 years a 2 billion ounce above ground supply of silver. Now that's held a lot by investors, uh, some warehoused by industry, and some what they call them the float. But nonetheless, this is something that a lot of silver investors haven't been aware of. Uh, they heard the deficit story when I did the world circuit many times. Uh, talking about the deficit, but that ended. So that's uh, something I want your comment on because GFMS and CPM have a different definition of the word deficit. Deficit from GFMS is basically that if you take all the mining available versus the amount of silver demand in total, there is a deficit. But if you add back in the amount of recycled silver, which is roughly 165 million ounces a year, the supply above ground builds. Now, when I gave that talk in New Orleans, I had a lot of people in the silver community that were pretty upset with the fact. I'm not here to sit there and try to paint a picture that isn't exactly correct. And uh, even Bill Murphy on the panel kind of shook his head and said, what, wait, whoa, you know? And I said, Bill, it's a fact. And he says, well, why are we investing in silver? And I said, well, I turned it on him. So why are you investing in gold? The above ground gold supply has always built up. Silver has a lot of demand that takes it down in deficits at various times, a 15-year consecutive deficit, but now 11-year build. So your comments on this study that GFMS and the CPM group do, what do you think is going on? 
Well, a lot of these numbers are plugs. Um, you know, the mining supply is, is a relatively easy number to figure right. out. Um, the uh, investment demand is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, on, on the supply side, you know, they, 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 they always have um, uh, you know, this, this or the consumption side, they always have, you know, the, the, um, uh, the investment. And then on the supply side, they always have recycling. And, and the recycling is, is, is a number that they're not clear on. Right. Now, if, you know, you, you talk to the refiners around the world, they're, they, they're mostly privately held, mm -hmm. and they don't talk about their production. Absolutely. I, I know uh, the owner of uh, Republic uh, Minerals uh, or Republic Metals in uh, Miami, and they won't talk about their throughput to anyone. And I hate to interrupt you, but you know, we had, I don't know if you were involved or not, but we were going to try to consolidate a lot of these recyclers, mom and pops, mm -hmm. uh, together into one company, kind of what happened with the uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever business, and it didn't work. And I'm just re uh, revivifying the fact that none of them would talk about how much business they did or how much they recycled. Anyway, I'm right. sorry, back to you. Yeah, and that's exactly, they're all very secretive. Yeah. So, so that's a plug, you know, in GFMS's right. number. And, and, and so you, you know, so they, they, they kind of know what industry consumes, mm -hmm. but it's a guess as well. Right. You know, because, you know, you talk to Sony or Samsung, uh, Tesla or Toyota or, or, or uh, Apple and ask them how much silver they consume. They're not going to tell you. That's right. <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, so GFMS and CPM, they spend their time, you know, looking at, you know, okay, there's so much silver in here and they calculate how many of these are sold worldwide. Um, and, and, you know, if you look at Chinese uh, uh, cell companies, you know, a lot of the phones today in China are all Chinese devices. Right. And then that, that number, those numbers aren't published anywhere because they're all private Chinese companies. So no one actually knows, you know, how much is consumed. Right. So, so they, they, they come up with all these numbers um, and, and really they, I, I don't believe them at all, quite right. frankly. Uh, we, you know, we, you know, Todd Anthony, our VP of uh, Corporate Development, uh, did some analysis of uh, world production for 2017, mm -hmm. and you know, we don't know if his numbers are accurate yet, but um, uh, we know China's down, or probably Chile's down, uh, Mexico, um, uh, Canada, is, uh, is, is Australia are down in their silver production in 2017, and his numbers he calculated was 750 million ounces of silver for 2017, which is 50 million below last year, mm -hmm. and and uh, and then previous year is 850 million. Okay. So, so in, in 2016, GFMS's own numbers were 850 million. Yeah. Last year they were 800 million. So it looks like now they're going to be 750 if our not, if our calculation is correct. Um, so, you know, where's all the supply coming from that, right. that GFMS is talking about? I don't quite get it. Well, the other thing, and to pick on GFMS a little more, they keep talking about this physical deficit until this press release I just did on the on the video update for everybody. You know, not paid members. And it was like 32.2, I think, million ounce surplus. What is ironic about this study is that they talk about the deficit, physical one, and yet in the same exact study, they said, and I quoted it on my talk in New Orleans, that we are at a, a maximum above ground silver stockpile of 2.5 billion ounces, which represents 30 months of supply and is the highest in 21 years. Hmm. But yet, earlier in the report, you're talking about a deficit. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. Which way is it? I mean, if it's a different study, you could make an argument, okay, they think this and they think that, but that's not the case. So anyway, one is, I, I'm glad you spoke. Would you like to add on anything more? Because one, well, let me just agree with you on the aspect of 850 million ounces. Seem like a high. We're seeing, we know, mining supply is pretty easy to determine. Mm -hmm. These are big companies that have to report. Is there borough mining? Is, yeah, there is. Is it significant? No, it's not. We don't really have a good handle on recycling. So we know mining and silver is down. We know that the grades, generally speaking, not necessarily your company, are going down. Well, for us as well. Up. And so it's common sense that it's harder to get silver out of the ground. It's hard to get as much out of the ground. Now, there are some projects that are uh, coming up that are pretty significant in my state of opinion. But regardless of that, where are we today? So what do you think? Um, makes the most sense if you factor in the investment demand, which is significant. 
Uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to hear you first because I have a comment, but I want to hear what you have to what you have to think about. Well, it. just going, you know, comparing silver production um, uh, over the years. You know, we're currently mining nine to one. So for every one ounce of gold worldwide, the miners are mining nine ounces of silver, uh, and we're trading at seventy-seven, yeah. you know, to one. So. You know, if, I, I don't understand that ratio, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I think it's held here in the in this band because of its commercial requirements, its commercial need. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not in the banks uh, or the consumers. You know, the big consumers like Sony and and, and uh, the you know other companies that are huge consumers of silver in their best interest mm -hmm. to to allow silver to you know go higher. Mm -hmm. So, I think there's a vested interest in the market to keep it stable. You know, at, at these prices. You know, and it's, it's you know seventeen dollars silver is not bad. You know, what, you know when I, when I put first majestic together, you know silver was five bucks. Right. Um, you know, fifty dollars silver, you know, was a lot funner. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we all remember that. But um, um, you know, we, we we can make a decent business out of uh, at, at current metal prices. But I'm I'm a bull on silver. I think that uh, the prices will go a lot higher just because of the tr uh, mining ratio. Well, yeah. Well, back to First Majestic briefly, just myself personally, we recommended the stock at $4 and it stayed there for a while. Hmm. And then it started to gain the, what it needed or what it deserved, which is fair value. Hmm. And of course it went up substantially. I mean, I just bought it last year as a trade because I kept my core position, but I bought it at 6 Are you kidding me? Hmm. You know, silver was like roughly 5 You hadn't proven a whole lot other than your reputation, which preceded you, but you hadn't really Put first majestic. I'm talking years ago now, Keith. Yeah, yeah. And it's here now. We're, it's like you know one of the most highly leveraged of silver price companies that exist. You prove what you can do. You've uh, upgraded the mines and made it the most very efficient mines. And I can I can buy that company at six dollars. Are you kidding me? I was all over it. Back on our previous discussion about what's going on with GFMS. First of all, you know. A fact is that it's owned by Thomson Reuters, and Reuters is owned by the Rothschilds and others, but primarily the Rothschilds. And one thing about the Silver Users Association is it's the only commodity in the world that has a users association. And what is their purpose? Well, I think it's pretty clear that their purpose is to keep the main users, like some of the companies you named. Uh, in a knowledge base to keep the pro to keep the price probably within a bandwidth that helps them. I mean, if you're in a position of using a lot of silver for industrial purposes, it's probably your benefit to know ahead of time what the silver price's bandwidth is going to be. Now, I'm not saying they're doing that, but if you look at the silver price over time and the supply demand fundamentals, they make absolutely no sense at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, when silver was down to 500 million ounces, which was a pretty short supply. The silver price was like 12, and when it built up above ground supplies for about five or six consecutive years, the price hit 50. So if you tell me that silver supply demand fundamentals work in the silver market, you're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> we see the ET. I think, I think every market is the same nowadays. I think it is. It's yeah. these algorithms that run everything. I'm for free markets. It is. Like it's, all, it's all markets. sentiment. It's all yeah, sentiment. sentiment. These markets are all driven by sentiment. Right. You want to say? More? Tell me more. You want to say more? No, you know, okay. it's, it's, you know well, it's a discussion. It's, I mean, yeah, you no, and I know each other for years. Right? If, if silver was in the headlines, then yeah. it would change. Yeah, it's, but, it's, uh, it's silver is looked at as a, a poor man's gold, mm -hmm. which is absolutely the wrong way to look at silver. Yeah. Uh, but you know, because I look at silver as a strategic metal, not not so much as a precious metal. It is precious, but it's very strategic as well. It is strategic. I'm going to jump in there, and I'm sorry I'm going to cut you short because I could talk to you for hours, and maybe in the bar we can. But you know, the utility of gold is money and jewelry. Utility of silver is everything technological, everything electric or electronic, everything that is uh, reflective or needs heat transfer. I mean, there's so many uses. So I use this corny analogy that if you're going to hire a personal assistant, and a personal assistant can drive your car and take notes for you, and their price is, uh, is 10x, and someone comes in that's x price, so they're, no, let's say 77x and someone comes in that's 177 the price, but they can take notes, drive your car, forecast the silver price, do your laundry, uh, pick up your kids, do daycare, I mean, name 12 other things, and they're 177 the price. Which one are you gonna hire? Which one's the most valuable to you? 
Well, I suggest the one that can do has more utility. And that's a silver story versus gold. Of course, I'm a silver bug. I'm prejudiced. I'm biased. Most of my portfolio of silver companies in silver itself. I'm not against gold. I'd like you to comment on that. What do you think about the utility of silver? Well, and you miss a very important um, area as, as well. You know, we're getting off oil and gas. You know, it, it's uh, the ball is is rolling. You know, we we know governments around the world are, are wanting to push electric cars. Uh, you know, we're changing the way we create energy on a global scale, and and that's going to require a ton of silver. Yeah. Um, all these electric cars are going to be huge consumers of silver, and uh, you know, people aren't aren't realizing it. You know, mm -hmm. a, a Tesla car has got a ton of silver in it, yeah. and. Uh, um, you know, if, if you know, and all the clean energy, um, you know, silver is a green metal. It is. It's, it's, it's what's required to do what we need to do as a human race to advance the population and, and create a better energy grid and so on and so forth. And, and you know, with, with you know, silver has got to be in people's portfolio, mm -hmm. but uh, headlines aren't picking up yet. Keith, it's always a pleasure. We can continue. I've got another interview to do. But okay. Yeah. Thank you so always much good. for coming. Good seeing you again. Okay. Hello, I'm David Morgan, publisher of The Morgan Report, and as some of you may already know, The Morgan Report is about money, metals, and mining. In fact, we cover all resources, from rare earth elements to precious metals. I've been publishing on the internet for about 20 years. My primary passion is to help people build and preserve their wealth. I love to make people millionaires. I've helped thousands of people via our research in The Morgan Report which has thousands of paid members and 10 times that amount on our free weekly updates. Here's what you'll receive from our free newsletter. To the point webinars, weekly analysis of the financial markets, interviews and our conference schedule, special reports such as riches and resources and various metals price forecasts. Our paid service client base is primarily small to medium sized business owners professionals in the industry, or the seasoned investor who understands markets and the value of precious metals. My area of expertise includes equity analysis throughout the resource sector, energy metals, base metals. We cover startups to billion dollar corporations. We focus on a special sector that makes money regardless of price oscillations, and the importance of precious metals due to the ongoing currency devaluations. Our team of three analysts and support staff can help you build and protect your wealth. It's important for you to know what other people have said. We're passionate about what we do. High integrity and trust. Tell the truth and own it. If we're wrong, we admit it. Take a long-term outlook with major assets and bet a little to win a lot with speculative situations. If you choose to become a client, you will gain financial insights very few, even professionals, recognize. You'll understand the importance of honesty in our financial system. You'll understand how the money system influences almost everything in your life. You'll be prepared for the ongoing currency crisis. And finally, I've chosen to make my life's mission greater than the individual, which means my mission statement is to teach and empower people to understand the benefits of an honest monetary and financial system. It's been a great journey so far and the best gains in the sector lie ahead over the next three to five years. I'm fortunate to have earned the status of being a leading authority in my field and helping others protect their wealth. You can email me at support at themorganreport.com or call my office at 480 325-0230.